hello everyone so welcome to this video tutorial of uh, how to set up QTS cloud on digital ocean uh, today we are going to cover uh, simple basic steps about uh, how you can you know uh, create a NAS or create a instance of QTS cloud in digital ocean in this tutorial I'm not going to cover how you can initialize the NAS and how you can create the storage pool and volumes inside the NAS because we are going to do a separate video for that uh, we are just going to cover the basic uh, single instance uh, deployment of QTS cloud on digital ocean okay so let's get started so this is our flow uh, that we are going to cover today for setting up the NAS on digital ocean okay so you can see there are a few steps but they're very simple uh, they might look very complicated but they are really simple so what I'm going to do is today uh, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about all the digital ocean services uh, the various cloud services that they provide uh, then the next step will be uh, uploading the VMDK image uh, the QTS cloud image onto digital ocean uh, then the next will be how we create a droplet and after creating droplet we have to select the plan and after selecting the plan we have to add volumes uh, create a SSH key and configure the firewall okay so these are the steps that you need to take uh, in order to create a single instance of uh, QTS cloud okay so we are going to refer to this uh, flowchart uh, time and again to and fro uh, while we go through the tutorial okay so let's get started uh, so I have already logged into my digital ocean so I'm going to show I'm not going to show you how to log into digital ocean so once you have logged in uh, these are the different services uh, currently that digital ocean are uh, providing all these are cloud services uh, droplets droplets are mainly uh, virtual machines okay so the e like just in AWS you have EC2 uh, in the, uh, in uh, digital ocean you have droplets okay so the EC2 of digital ocean is droplets so whenever you have to create a uh, virtual machine you have to create a droplet then kubernetes uh, volumes uh, for storage and databases spaces images for uploading any image or custom image networking uh, monitoring api so all these are different uh, services which are provided by uh, digital ocean but we don't have to uh, learn about any one of them uh, all of them we just mean mainly need to know about the droplets the images and within the networking there is a firewall part which I'll show you later okay so we don't have to worry about any of these at the moment so just care about the droplets and the images part okay so first thing is first thing what we need to do is let me show you here the first thing we need to do is we need to upload a QTS cloud VMDK file now uh, when you go to your digital ocean uh, either what you can do is you can create a new project or you can use an existing project so let's say for the person for somebody who's trying for the very first time you can create a new project and let's call this uh, project uh, Asim new and uh, you can just say uh, purpose select the purpose here and click on create project okay and yeah so you can you can we have created a new project called uh, Asim New. The purpose of uh, creating a project is like all your instances, all your uh, virtual machines or droplets, all of them, they can be uh, classified or uh, organized within the same project. So maybe within Asim New project, there are many droplets. So you can, you know, combine all of them under one project. Okay. So the next thing is uh, you have to upload the QTS cloud image onto digital ocean. Now, you can go to the QTS cloud uh, uh, landing page this is the link the URL for the QTS cloud landing page once you go to this landing page you will be able to see all the information related to QTS cloud and what you have to do is just scroll down here and you will be able to see the uh, download link for digital ocean so uh, for DigitalOcean, the format uh, supported is VMDK format, uh, and uh, you will be able to see the you know you will be able to download it from here. Currently, uh, because this uh, we have not released our uh, we have not released our landing page pub uh, publicly, so that's why there is no download link here. But eventually, you will be able to download the link from here. So once you click on the download link, you will be able to download the 
image file okay so it's very important for digital ocean please use the vmdk file now assuming you already have the vmdk file on your local machine what you need to do is you have to upload it first to digital ocean so how to do that you have to go to images section this images section and once you go to the image section you have to upload a custom image so click on the custom part and what you need to do is you need to click on the upload image and once you do that you can see here now this is a image I already downloaded on my local machine so you click here click on open and you can give it any name uh, let's say a scene new a scene new okay so let's call it a scene new image and you can choose the data center region now you can choose the data center region as per your uh, preference I, I will just suggest that maybe the one which is closest to your uh, location is the is the better so anyways for our case let's say we choose New York it will not affect your uh, working in any ways I think I just I feel like maybe the ones which are closer to you might be uh, faster so you can uh, we choose a uh, New York data center and uh, uh, we have to select the distribution as unknown okay and let's click on upload image so now you can see the details of your image being uploaded here and you can see the image is uploading and the total size of the image is three it will take some time so what we can do is we can uh, wait either I mean we can move ahead uh, and skip this part so you can see here I have an image called Asim Test QTS Cloud VMDK. I just uh, uploaded this a few minutes ago. So this is the image that we can use further. Okay, so let's assume that uh, our image is uploaded, and uh, so this is our image. Now the next step is once you have uploaded your image, we have to create a droplet and select the plan. Okay, so let's do one thing. We'll go to droplets here. Okay. So, or you can go to the new uh, project that you created, uh, seem new, and within this, you can start a droplet. Again, as I said, droplet is mainly a virtual machine, just like EC2 in AWS. Now, first thing you have to do is you have to choose the image. Now, click on custom images, and in the custom images, I told you this is the image we uploaded recently, so let's use this one, okay? And then what we have to do is we have to choose our plan here. Plan means like what are the configurations that we are going to use. So for the sake of this video, we can just choose a, a simple plan. Let's say this one, 4 GB uh, RAM and two uh, and uh, two virtual CPUs. Uh, please note that the minimum uh, RAM needed for creating a QTS Cloud is 2 GB, and it's uh, mentioned on the uh, QTS Cloud. Uh, uh, it's mentioned on the QTS Cloud landing page. At the bottom of the QTS Cloud landing page, you can see a minimum of 2 GB memory is needed for running QTS Cloud. Okay, so you can go to this landing page. At the bottom, you will be able to see the system requirements. Okay, so we recommend that you use at least 2 GB of memory if you want to run QTS Cloud. So let's go for this one. So I choose this plan. And as I said, after I select the plan, the next thing is I have to add volumes or basically uh, st disks, or storage disks to my NAS. So let's do this here. I click on add volume. And uh, again, uh, for QTS Cloud, we recommend that if you want to create a storage pool, we recommend that you at least put each disk for 200 uh, GB. So, okay. So I'll recommend you to use this one. So you can use. Uh, one uh, uh, disk of 200 GB okay uh, you can uh, remove volume also uh, if you want and uh, once you click on this or once you choose this uh, what we have to do is you have to click your data center region and I'll recommend you to keep the same as uh, the previous one okay and uh, you can leave all these items just like that and for authentication purpose uh, it's uh, compulsory from the digital ocean perspective that we select a ssh key or at least one time password but actually you are not going to use it anywhere okay so because this video is for internal purpose only what you can do is you can 
pick any one of them so let's say you pick just any any, any random ssh key authentication key and that will be okay as i said we are not going to use it anywhere it's just a compulsory step within the digital ocean flow work okay so just choose this one and then uh, you can provide some tags let's say a seem new and you can select the project already there and click on create droplet and once we do that uh, you will be able to see your droplet created so you can see uh, this droplet has been added to a seem new project okay so this is my droplet and as you can see it is still creating it will take some time and that's it yeah so my droplet is created already and uh, this is the tag which I entered and this is the IP address of my droplet or of my NAS okay now um, I can click here and I can view more details about my droplet okay and if you want I can just change the name of this droplet to a scene new uh, droplet okay so I can change the name so this is my droplet okay maybe something is wrong anyways we can skip this so this is the droplet which I have created okay so after adding volumes after uh, creating the SSH key uh, the droplet is created and the last step now is to configure the firewall now it's very important that uh, in QT, uh, in digital ocean uh, you have to uh, do the port settings after creating the droplet normally in uh, AWS and Azure these will uh, these settings will come while you are creating the uh, virtual machine but in uh, digital ocean you have to do it separately okay so the way to do that is you can go to uh, this section called networking and in the networking you can go to firewalls here okay I think this uh, looks like uh, right now the digital ocean site is down just give me some time let's refresh maybe it will reload in some time I think I signed I got signed out automatically uh, maybe some problem with the digital ocean uh, website okay so we have signed in again so uh, let's go to this manage tab and you can go to networking and in the networking section you have to go to firewalls here okay so the so the firewall will help us to configure the port settings you can create a new firewall give it any name let's call it a seam new firewall okay so once you do that you have to define some inbound rules uh, so what we suggest is at least uh, HT for H you can uh, define the HTTPS uh, 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 port and also you can define the HTTP port as 80 and also I think uh, custom port uh, with the TCP protocol and port range 80 I think 80, 80 will be better yeah so these are the inbound rules that we suggest these are the minimum inbound rules which we suggest that you know you can use for QTS cloud uh, if you want to know more details about which ports uh, are being used by QNAP uh, QTS or QTS cloud you can go to this URL here okay and you will be able to see all the different ports which are being used by QTS and the different services I mean which different services are using which ports okay so you can use that uh, you can refer to this table and at any point of time if you want to configure your firewall you, if you want to change your uh, port settings you can do it at any point of time okay so once I have defined my rules uh, for my firewall what I need to do is I need to apply it and the way to do that is I can apply it by typing my name here so this one so this is the droplet I created so we have to apply it to the droplet and I just click on create firewall and once I do that so you can click on this firewall and you can see that this firewall is applied to this particular droplet already okay so now that's it so we are ready to use our QTS cloud now okay so you just click here and what you need to do is just copy this link and paste it here 
uh, recommend to use HTTPS and enter and just proceed on save and you will be able and you will be redirected to the initialization page of QTS NAS okay and you can see here now yeah so we have already reached the QTS cloud initialization page so that's that's how you uh, create a simple uh, droplet a single instance droplet on uh, digital ocean okay so the steps are pretty simple uh, so as you can see uh, we just we, there, there's not a lot of steps involved here so compared to AWS or in Azure I'll say uh, setting up the instance is much more simpler in uh, digital ocean so yeah so that's all for uh, this video uh, thank you for watching